I'm just gonna come out and ask. Are you still getting over your ex? How did this become about him? Hey guys, welcome to Little Black Book. You already know what time it is. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for the notification of the world. Uploads, baby. For those of your returnees, you ain't got the minerals. You ain't got the minerals. Ah, 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 ah. Alright, listen, we're going to talk to you guys about Insecure Episode 3. It got down and dirty. I really loved it. So, let's start off with um, Condola and Lawrence in the opening scene. So, that's for good. <laughs> no, serious. You're doing big things. Makes me feel like I need to step my game up. Um, love the fact obviously they were, they were in the bedroom and obviously you know how couples do, you know what I mean, you wake up in the morning, he woke up early and obviously sees her lying there sleeping. Now obviously the conversation that was had was very, very key, I think it's very interesting um, because I think sometimes in couples, it, well in relationships, what people seem to forget is that um, people's ambitions and goals need to be, I wouldn't say in alignment, but they should be running in the same heat. Meaning this, if I'm running finals, I need to have somebody who's also running kind of finals. You know what I'm saying? Um, because it helps to sharpen me. If you're always running, you know, uh, the heats, but never get to the quarterfinals, semifinals, or even the finals, then really, are we really running the same kind of race? You know what I'm saying? Are we, are we, are we able to sharpen one another? Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Um, so I think when they were talking about, obviously, um, he was congratulating and saying, obviously, Condola, you know, you're making me up my game because of, he said, congratulations for what you're doing. First of all, it's important to celebrate your partner's wins, yeah? Don't be that guy or even that woman that doesn't support them in their wins. When they win, you win. So you've got to support them and, and congratulate them. Offer words of affirmation, whatever their love language is, offer it to them, you understand? Because when someone's done something great, we celebrate them, we uplift them, yeah, so they can do more. You understand? Um, positive re, um, reinforcement, right? And so that's what he does. Um, and then he says something which is like, you know, you're making me want to up my game. And I think this is very important because the challenge of an individual, especially a male who finds a woman that is um, very um, competitive in a sense of her growth and where she's going to, you as a male need to be secure in the fact that you, you have the capacity to keep up. When there is a lack of capacity to keep up, this is where men say, I don't want to date a certain type of gal. So women, it's not your fault, it's us men. When we, when we feel like we do not have a capacity to keep up, we declare ourselves out of the race. I DQ myself, or DNF, I did not, or DNS, I did not start, you know what I'm saying? Or DNF, yeah, I didn't finish. And the reason why is because we feel like we don't have the capacity to keep up. It's a bit like me right now. If I try to run, you're saying, I'm not even gonna try and win that race. I can't win that race, what? Maybe man will pull a, maybe man will pull a hammy, but why should he pull a hammy for me to win the race? I mean, I should have the capacity to push him to the line at least. Do you understand? And that's what he's saying here. Like, you know, the fact he's congratulating her and obviously, you know, he's, he's making it up himself. When you've got the capacity to up yourself to another level, um, the relationship's able to work. When you're unable to up yourself to a certain level, that's when problems start to kick in. That's where insecurity starts to kick in. That's where, you know, the overcompensate or the undercompensate starts to kick in from your side because you're feeling a certain way. You feel like you don't have the capacity to match what that person's bringing. So I thought that was a very important part to kind of mention. Um, um, and then obviously you see him talking later on to his boy in a car, talking about the pressures. Obviously he came from a meeting which didn't go down. Um, and he seemed to talk to his boy about the pressures of, obviously, the fact that the company's going through restructuring. And let me tell you something. Um, going through a redundancy, I've gone through it myself. Brother, ain't easy. It's never pretty. Um, and it's not something that anybody really wants to be going through because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a scary time. You know, it's un, 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 an unprecedented time maybe for a lot of us, especially if you're young, to go through, like, let's say, a company restructuring which releases you from position. Obviously, he's not getting released from, position, from the position, but... You know, that's in the back of his mind because the first thing he said was, oh, yeah, they're going through restructuring. I'm not getting fired. I still got my job. I mean, I'm the token kind of black guy, but there's no promotion now. Now, that's, you see what I'm talking about, the capacity. And you see what I'm talking about, the pressure. Person they got. Oh, it's just you black and bulletproof. What's the problem, my guy? Bro, it means that nobody's getting promoted, man. I'm supposed to be moving up, not standing still. Oh, nigga, that's not standing still. I so what happens now is that there's, there's now a pressure that's not actually been applied from Condola herself. But there's an internal pressure from the man himself to do better. Because we only know in society as a man has to do better than a woman financially, uh, status-wise, all that kind of things. A man has to be better, right? And so his first thought is now, okay, maybe not lose my job, but my next thing is out, 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 promotion's not coming. You know, 
I, I, am I going to be able to keep up with Canola at this rate? You know what I'm saying? And that's what's now fixing the back of his mind. And his friend talk about some nonsense, but obviously how he brought up a, a, a brand new range to keep up with the Joneses. Let's, let me tell you anything. Like, guys, listen. Never try to keep up with the Joneses. Because if you try to keep up with these things, yeah, they kill you in the end. These are the things that cripple you. Be smart. Play the game. Your time and your season is coming at the right time. You understand? Yeah, if you don't need a range, don't get a range. And you see, and this is why it's important. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morale. Because you see, not that the guy's even necessarily bad, but his, his advice was poor. Like he said, look, you see that beat up car that you got now? You need to change it up because of what? Because of what? Change it for what reason? I'm not there yet. Then why did you buy a brand new range? To keep up appearances, my nigga. <laughs> for what, man? For who? Shit, everybody. Mostly Leo, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, a smart friend gives wise counsel. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Not foolish counsel. You feel me? Um, what was interesting, I think, was a random meeting with, um, you know, Issa and Lawrence in the restaurant. I'm guessing, obviously, this is where, obviously, Issa and, um, you know, Canola have been coming, and it's one of the places where... I'm guessing uh, Kanona really likes. And unfortunately, what we're seeing now is that not necessarily the encroachment, because you see, Issa's allowed to go to this restaurant. What I'm saying, what, what, you all understand what I'm saying? There's ter we have territories, yeah? Places that we normally go to, yeah? It's never a problem for Issa to go to this place normally, right? But the problem is, your ex is my current man. Do you understand? So now, the territory of where we go to or where I like going to, you can't really go to. Because there's a high likely chance now that I'm going to see you and my man. So unless the relationship is ideal between Issa, Lawrence and Canola, where it's no longer no feelings between Issa and, 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 and Lawrence, then yeah, I mean, going to the restaurant or going to the, the little um, cafe, or whatever, might not be as much of a problem. She can sit in a corner, nobody's going to bat an eyelid. But the trouble is, there is still some kind of spark. And I think Canola... Up until that point, wasn't really feeling a certain way. Unt wasn't feeling a certain way in terms of distrust, but it was just awkward, right? But I think officially, when she saw the interaction between um, Issa and um, Lawrence and the little banner that they had back and forth about films, yeah, that might have struck a little chord in Condola's chest, yeah. And that's only rightly so. You understand? There's always that one person that will always have your heart. It might be Issa, you understand? So I can understand why Kanola's feeling that, st that stress. Like I said, it's about... They found him. Uh, that's what we doing? We spoiling that stuff again? We don't come into America, they went back to Africa. Hmm, and love don't cost a thing? Shit got expensive. Well, the best man and the best man? Territory. That's why we call it kingdom. It means domain. It means your place of dominance, where you dominate a certain piece of land or territory. Do you understand? Now, obviously, we are all dominating in our relationship. We want to have a domain where we control. So when another party is coming into it, we automatically feel threatened. Do you understand? So now, Kanona's got... Kanona, obviously, you know, you see them, they're cool there. But later on, it's an issue. It's an issue that she feels like, and this is where insecurity starts to kick in, you see. This is where people start to feel insecure because, um, because certain things are happening that make us lose footing, yeah? The, 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 the solid ground that we had. The solid rock I stand all on the ground is sinking sand. It's no longer the solid ground because something has now shaken the foundation. Do you understand? Um, and that's the fact that she's now seen Issa and Lawrence get on really, really well. Um, and even then, as Issa left, she wasn't really being truthfully honest with herself because she was looking back all longingly at the fact them two. Now, does she want him back or does she like the fact that, you know what, doesn't like the fact that obviously my man's moving on? Because sometimes we don't actually like the person. We just, we just want to have control over the fact when they move on because we haven't moved on. And what I mean by that is that we haven't moved on to bigger and better things. She's moved on. She's had sex with... With, with my man with the with the with the, with the, the Hennessy and the and the and the weed, but it it felt no she she still feels a certain way because she hasn't moved on. She's had sex, she hasn't moved on, and that's the keyest thing. And so now she's looking back longingly as she leaves the restaurant or leaves the cafe, whatever, right? Because she hasn't fully moved on. Um, and the thing about exes is this, you know, the the thing that drives fear in a lot of us is the fact that with an ex you've already built a chapter. You understand? It doesn't take long to flick another chapter for you to start again. Do you understand? Whereas somebody new has to, has to get a whole new book and start writing again. But the problem is with an ex, the book's already been started, has already been written, has already started being written, and all it requires for us to continue from where we left off. Do you understand? Um, and so that's always a scary thing, I think, for Canola in this situation, which is that at any moment the spark could reunite itself. You understand? 
That's the key thing. I mean, y'all only been talking, what, like two, three months? You gonna pull an old Molly and scare his ass away. <laughs> Obviously, then we got over to, to Molly and Issa. Now, I already said in just episode two, I was not sure in terms of, I guess, the behaviour from uh, Molly and Issa and the sense of that. It felt, well, from what we saw, I saw the, the shade from Molly first, do you know what I'm saying? The shade, the fact that she did it towards um, Issa about her life is messy, etc. Now, in the in the shopping mall, now, Issa said something which was interesting. Um... She said, obviously, when, uh, Molly, uh, when Molly asked Issa, should I bring Andrew to, the, obviously, the you know, the, 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 the family meeting, the get fans given, right? Um, you know, Issa made a little joke, but it came off bad because she was like, oh, you know, um, you, you're going to scare him, you're going to scare him off with that old, with that old Molly, with that old Molly stuff. And that was a jab. You're going to scare him off with that old Molly. It, did, it didn't go down as a joke because it wasn't a joke. Do you understand? Um, and you see, jokes have a percentage of truth and pain in them. Do you understand? And so this is the, that's the truthfulness of any joke. It's got pain as well as truth in it. That's what makes it funny. And so the way that Molly received it wasn't as a joke. And I don't think it, the tone didn't come out correct anyway. I think that's kind of the thing that you don't joke about. Keep that in your head. You understand? I don't think you have to, you have to say those kind of things because they cause damage. And then Molly then replies because she, you know, she, she, I feel like Molly is slightly jealous of the um, Issa and the um, Condola friendship. As well as obviously I know that she sees that fact that obviously that's her ex's, um, that's her ex kind of partner now and it can cause problems. I know she sees that. I know she sees wisdom in that and that it's not a great friendship. But the way you deliver something makes somebody want to come to you again and deliver information to you or deliver give information to you voluntarily or never again. And I don't like everything's cool with that. It is cool. Matter of fact I saw the two of them together yesterday. What like on a date? How was it? It was all love, all around. And I remember what Molly's doing is a sense of assumption and judgment. And when you're a friend, you can't do assumption and judgment. Even if you know that person's character. I've done it before. We've all done it before. When someone brings information to you, as some of you have done it before. Oh, I know how this ends. You've done it with that girl before. I've done told you already. Like, da 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 da. And now you're assuming you're not listening. Now, when you begin to assume and listen, you, you, get, you, you start to come into a place of judgment. When you get into a place of judgment, the person cannot come before you. When you feel like you're about to be judged, it, it begins to um, emanate shame. So now the person can't come to you because they feel shame. They, don't feel, they no longer feel like they can be naked in front of you. They no longer feel like they can be vulnerable in front of you. So now they don't come to you. This is why Issa went to her brother to talk about the situation of how she truly felt about herself and Canola. Had Molly come with a more humble um, response and a more loving um, response, this wouldn't have been happening. But unfortunately, because Molly came with the assumption and the judgment, okay, um, that she really knew what it was, that's why. And her tone in terms of being like, being very highly critical over the fact that Issa is friends with Canola, rather than trying to understand. See, a lot of people don't hear, listen to understand, they listen to respond. They listen to tell you what they're, to tell, to tell you that they're right, to tell you that they've got the wisdom, to tell, to tell you that they've got the knowledge. And when you do that, you cause people not to come to you. Listening, very important. We have Lawrence and Condola. So when, um, it was interesting because obviously, prior to this, Lawrence obviously didn't get invited to the Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, he said, obviously, um, he basically, she was saying, obviously, he invited himself, right? Not him. Okay, cool. Which is a bad foot anyway. Gets there now. Um, we can see already there's a difference in their banter. He gets in there. He makes a little joke about going and leaving. Colonna doesn't get it. You understand? And it's just like the shock all over again. And I said, this is going to drive the insecurity there. When people's banter's missing, the, the ability to find you funny. I will gobble. I brought a couple bottles. All right, I will let myself out. Thank you. No, don't go. I was just joking. I know. So was I. Yeah, it's a very huge thing because someone who makes you feel, someone who's funny and you find their banter funny, their attraction grows. When you find that you're not finding them funny, their attraction begins to dissipate. It begins to go away from another person. Trust me. Check any relationship you have, man. When you start to find that person funny in a little quirky, cute kind of ways, not just jokes, you start to realise you start to draw close to them. The moment you begin to be irritated by the fact you don't get their jokes, you don't like their jokes, you start to drift apart. You understand? So humour's a very big thing. What's interesting is that Lawrence's um, kind of ego took over and there's a pipe there which the plumber didn't come. And it's like Lawrence wanted to show that he was you know, show himself approved, show that, you know, he was a man, show himself that, you know, he's got things. No necessary. All of it is ego. You don't know how to do plumbing. Don't touch it, right? You don't know how to do plumbing, but what he wanted to do was 
create this great impression. Sometimes your great impression isn't necessarily in just doing something. Sometimes your great impression is your authenticity. Being authentic to yourself, if you don't know, oh, and at least you're going to say, listen, babe, I don't even know, you know, but let me give it a try. You understand? If it goes wrong, you say, babe, I thought I'd give it a try and I didn't really work out. Cool. Honesty, transparency, right? Always important. Proactiveness is and honesty. Reactiveness is transparency. Very important. Um, uh, and then obviously we see him talking to the group of friends and what we see is that the joke that was made by the friend about his shirt just seems like it was off. Not only that, the girl that he obviously was complimenting saying, oh, you work at Burberry or Blueberry, sorry, um, you know, um, you know, he, said, he kind of praised her like, you know, you work at Blueberry, that's great. And then she obviously, he mentioned this company and she was like, but aren't they going through restructuring? Da, da, da. And it came off shady. Um, you know, and it came off like Canola's friends are a bit uppity. Shirt. It's sublime. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what he's trying to show, right? That he's going to go into a different class of friends, whereas beforehand, these other class of friends with Issa and that, all down to earth, all cool, all chill. But when you come into this circle of friends, there needs to be an upping of the game, which relates back to the very opening scene I'm saying about the capacity to grow beyond. And sometimes when you're, when you're seeing a situation where you feel like you can't bring the capacity to, you quit. Or you go overboard. And it's very hard to find a balance of you know, trying to achieve and, and, and being respected and, and trying to really push the limits and having to go too far just because you want to prove to people or a set of people that you're, you're a level. Do you know what I mean? And so I would say this, look, whenever a comment like that comes, you know, about the shirt thing, you can either be confident and ride it off and say, well, you know what, fam, I'm here, this is me. Or you may take it the wrong way and you may be frustrated by that comment and actually take heart to it. I'm not saying either one is right or wrong. I'm saying, look, it just comes with the territory, depending on how you feel. Uh, and then obviously the conversation he has with, the, with the, the, the drunk girl in the kitchen, which was a, a really bad one. But look, the girl said, obviously, look, you know what, basically saying, alluding to the fact that, you know, Condola's using Lawrence as, you know, a get over, a leg get over, right? He's like a rebound in a sense. And the way he felt, because I believe the, the, the friendship group that he has with, this, with Condola and the group of friends that he's just, he's just experienced are not really on his wavelength. And then... Obviously, combined with his own thoughts and how he feels, whatever this woman said confirmed that bias. So if he felt like Condola's really not feeling me the way I think I'm feeling her, and then this woman says this, it confirms his bias. After Mark left her and they got divorced, she needs to let loose and have fun and get over him. Keep it casual. Well, yeah, that's, that's good to know. You understand? And now he can run away with it. And the reason why I said that is because when Condola comes in after everything's done, said and done, he begins in an akazu in an ac ac accusing role, rather than actually asking to find out. Fuck, buddy. What? She said that? Yeah. Lawrence, I am so sorry. She is a mess. Why would she say that? So he already started cornering the market without actually asking the question. And that's because the woman confirmed his bias. So now the way he feels has been <coughs> justified, and now he leads with an accusation, <coughs> rather than actually asking. Get me? We'll come back onto that. I mean... I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me a little bit. We were together for five years. You know, um, Issa was talking to her bro, and I think this is a very key conversation. It relates to what I said about the Molly and her. Um, with Molly, she's not feeling emotionally safe at the moment to be able to release her truest, deepest feelings, that she's not comfortable with Condola at the moment, yeah? Now, if Molly had been in an emotional safety place, she could have admitted this to Molly without feeling any, without feeling any shame or judgment. But because she was getting a judgment, um, shame tone, she decided to tell her brother. Yeah, and now she decided to even stay with her brother on Thanksgiving rather than going to Molly's because what will she get at Molly's? More condemnation? You see, a guilty man can't come before the Lord. A man who feels guilty can't come before the Lord. So the Lord has to free from that mentality, get you to a place of grace and love. You understand? And when you get to that place, when you offer, when he offers a hand, you can take it. But a lot of times in Christianity, what happens is people preach the guilt, the Ten Commandments, da -da 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 -da, and someone feels already guilty and condemned. They ain't coming to the Lord. But if we preach that, listen, Christ died for that. God died for that so that you can come to him, regardless of what you've done. God has died for that. So when he's offering a hand, grab You know, I got the work in progress and it took a lot of support and patience and... Um, Issa obviously made a point that she felt like, you know, um, Condola's really reaping the benefits of her fluffing up, as a term I think the Receipts podcast used. Fluffing up, meaning to, um, you know, prep and to and to train a guy in a certain way but actually in the end you don't get the benefits you don't reap the benefits of it 
And this happens to a lot of women, you know, and, and the reason why is because a lot of women will see the potential in somebody, put all the effort into that young man. And what will happen is they break up, he doesn't feel it no more, and then he gets on. And because of that training, he now goes for to actually do what you wanted him to do with somebody else. Um, and, you know, what happens is because when broken people meet people who are well trained, yeah, the well-trained person can end up training the broken person. When I say this, it depends on the, on the area you're broken in, yeah? Whether it's financial management, whether it's emotional management, whether it's spiritual management, whether it's mental management, whether it's um, physical management, whether it's sexual management, whatever level of intimacy that you are broken in, if that person's well-trained in that area, they can begin to train you. And what will happen is you take that training and say, thank you very much, Master, and move on. And the reason why is because oftentimes we've, there's a lot of pain and hurt in the training, um, and so what happens is we want to start a new page and so what you get is women doing uh, women oftentimes who are well versed in certain areas of training and that man leaves that relationship and then goes and says look I want a brand new start page and I'm gonna and I'm gonna be a man because I'm gonna use what she's taught me but with another girl she don't know what I've been taught and I'm gonna use that and look like more of a man you must understand this that's the thinking that I want to look more like a man but with in your eyes you're always gonna see me as the man that I trained and this is a problem so the question is whether women should still keep on training men. If you're training men, should you continue? Probably not. <laughs> if you're not going to read the benefits. And then obviously Molly, um, you know, Molly has a problem with her dad. We see this look, and I think with little girls especially, when something like this happens where the dad cheats, right? She must have saw her dad like a superhero. Saw him like an amazing man. Saw him like invincible. Saw him as unbreakable. Saw him as the, the, the moral code and the standard that any other guy has to meet, right? When he shatters that dream, it shatters her imperfect in, in, in envisionment, uh, embodiment of uh, what a man should be. Now she's no longer sure. Is this what a man should be? Is this what, a man, is this what, is this what I'm going to expect, right? Um, because she never, she never felt that brokenness in terms of an image being shattered like that but when her dad did what he did then it shatters that dream and so now she doesn't this now what actually should have happened was that this is why cheating is so deep the dad doesn't have to only apologize to the mum he has to apologize to the rest of the family the immediate family because each one of them has been affected by your action um, and especially the women because what happens is the men tend to well he's a man as we grow up because we grow up in society and society tells you oh he's a man so the brother's cool but the woman sees herself as that next time I'm going to be in a relationship and the man's going to be just like you. Just all grown up. I'm just saying, he a regular ass dude who fucked up, he owned it, and he made it right. I guess. Then I'm in trouble, right? And so now she feels a certain way. And what needed to happen actually was that the father needed to come before the daughter and the son and say, listen guys, my bad. I, I messed up. Do not look at me as, did it, but let me tell you this, this is how it should be. He should have redressed it, reapplied, re kind of messed, kind of fixed it up a little bit to make it plausible. Why would she say that? I don't know. She was drunk. But is that how you feel? It was interesting, obviously, just kind of um, watching the end scene with Condola and um, and Lawrence because the way it started, like I said, there was a false accusation from Lawrence straight away. You know, when he says, "Obviously, am I just an f buddy?" Um, and in his head, he's conf he's conf he's already fixated on this image because of the because of the confirmed bias from the drunk woman, right? And then he makes a false assumption as well by saying you don't want a family. But actually, what she said was, I don't want to get married again. Now, in the scene where she says, I don't want to get married, she wants to stay far away from marriage. His face actually changed. Why? Because he wants to get married. Now he's in a place where he feels like he probably wants to do these things, right? But she's emotionally not in that place. I don't think she wants to run away from marriage, but per se, she's running away from what she's experienced. And marriage brings her to that place again. I don't experience that. As human beings, we don't want to go down the same road we went before. And so what he's hearing is, whoa, you don't want to get married, you don't want a family. Whoa, that's not what I said. No, I said, I don't want to get married. How does that link to a family? I can have a family without getting married. But for him, in his head, marriage leads to family. Yeah, it's the correct steps to get into a family. And so all of this is playing in his mind. And obviously because he's got that image, now when she said what, when I said she, she want to get married, in his head, it triggers something, hey, you don't want a family too. Because that's how I see things. It's marriage, then family. You understand? I don't see it out of wedlock. I'm just gonna come out and ask. Are you still getting over your ex? How did this become about him? And uh, Lawrence said, obviously, you know, are you still trying to get over your ex? And what I didn't like from Condola was the fact that she shifted the pan diagram and then said, oh, and then, you know, kind of laughed and then didn't actually answer the question. It was a, it was a, it was a closed question. 
It was a closed question, which means yes or no. Instead, she actually turned around and asked another question, which was, should we be concerned about his relationship and Issa's relationship? You know what I'm saying? So instead of answering the question specifically, she turned it around. And what's, what's, what's interesting is the fact that, you know, Condola feels a certain way between, uh, you know, Issa and Lawrence's relationship. But the truth of the matter is, Lawrence never asked for her to stay around. You did. So now you're projecting. So we've got both parties doing something. She, he's, a, he's putting assumptions together with unconfirmed bias. She's doing things where she's projecting, right? Her fears of the fact that an ex could potentially become something more is now being projected onto him. So instead of her answering the question directly, how about your ex? And you start laughing and turned away from him rather than actually saying, yes, do you know what? I'm, not, I'm, I'm over my ex. I don't want anything to do with him. You actually turned your body to go away from him. So you never actually answer the question because you answered it with another question. You don't answer the question with another question. Do you understand? I'm not saying that she's guilty. What I'm saying is that there may be more to this than she's actually letting off. So to flip it onto him is to project. And that's no way she could do it. So yeah, guys, um, with the insecure review, I hope you liked what we did. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of the uploads. We will talk more about insecure. Appreciate y'all. Stay locked and loaded.